Most of us have heard the Steve Jobs quote, a lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them. And that's where Apple's original AirPods, for me, elicited a bit of a strange reaction when they were first announced over six years ago in September 2016 alongside the iPhone 7. My reaction was along the lines of, I don't know that these are really worth the $100 plus price tag when I'm happy enough with my AirPods. Will going wirelessly really delight me enough to make me happy to part with $129? Plus, they just kind of look funny in your ears. But the pain and friction of life with multiple earpods finally proved to be too much in September of 2018, and I purchased the AirPods along with my iPhone XS Max and the Apple Watch Series 4. Now, the reason I'm even talking about the original AirPods is because I have a hunch that a lot of you watching this video don't own any of Apple's AirPods, or maybe you own the original AirPods like I did. For those of you who don't own AirPods, you're holding out. Maybe the AirPods are good enough, or maybe you've got some other companies much less expensive wireless buds. And I get it especially when it comes to the AirPods Pro 2. They're $249. That's a lot of money for a tech accessory that's more of a luxury than an absolute necessity. You can't get by without your iPhone, but you could make do without the AirPods Pro 2, right? So if that's you, if you keep checking for deals on AirPods, if you're circling the purchase of them, struggling to justify the expense, resisting as much as you can, and enduring your aging AirPods, I see you, and I'm here to tell you, to stop. Because these AirPods Pro 2 are, without question, one of my favorite pieces of Apple tech to come out in the last 10 years. So let's go through everything I love about them in a bit more detail. The auto switching between devices works pretty dang well. It's not flawless and it can be a little frustrating when it doesn't work, but overall I'm happy with this feature. It seems to work best with my iPhone and iPad mini, but with my MacBook Pro I often have to go up to the Bluetooth icon in the menu bar, and although it shows my AirPods are connected, I'm not hearing the audio through them, so I end up having to click on the AirPods in the Bluetooth drop-down menu, then I'll see the AirPods show up in the menu bar and I can finally hear audio through the AirPods Pro. I've checked my Bluetooth settings for the AirPods and it is set to automatically connect, so I'm not sure why they don't fully connect when they automatically connect to my MacBook Pro. When I sit down to watch TV with my Apple TV, I get the AirPods Pro connection notification about 80% of the time. When it does pop up, I just hit the home button on my Apple TV remote and they connect right away. When it doesn't pop up, I have to go into the settings app and do it manually. A little annoying, but not the end of the world. Hopefully this becomes more reliable after some firmware updates and software updates. So I really love this feature, especially the idea of this feature. I just wish it worked as close to flawlessly as possible. As of now, there's still room for improvement. Look, I'm not an audiophile. I don't know the difference between low end and mid and treble and all that stuff. I'm a Philistine, I know. But to me, these really do just sound great. They're a significant improvement over my original AirPods, and I love to listen to podcasts, YouTube videos, music, and movies and TV shows with them. They're immersive and rich, and the sound is full and warm, and it's very reminiscent of all the major, major sound improvements we've seen since Apple bought Beats by Dre. My 14-inch MacBook Pro speakers, my HomePod mini speakers, I think they all sound really, really good. And that, of course, includes the AirPods Pro 2. Spatial audio is cool, but I don't really care about it all that much. It's a fun effect. I'm not sure if it's quite delightful, but I always notice it when I turn my head. It's kind of strange the first two times you hear it because you're not used to it, but now I am, so I'm not noticing it each time it happens. Would I be heartbroken if this feature went away? No. Is it a fun one to have? Sure. The battery life on the AirPods Pro 2 is phenomenal. I never have an issue. I've watched TV for hours on end, used them on a plane for close to three hours. I have never dealt with them running out of juice or even coming close to running out. Apple says they can get up to six hours of battery life, and although I haven't tested this, I believe it. I know I can count on them to work for hours on end while I watch TV, listen to music on a plane, or venture out into the world for some street photography like I did in Los Angeles back in October. If battery life is important to you, the AirPods Pro 2 have it covered. I love this feature, and I regret to say that the AirPods Pro 2 were my very first experience with noise cancellation anything. Again, how did I live without this, especially on a plane? Because planes are really loud, and that sound environment on a plane really strains my ears and makes it difficult for me to focus on a movie or my writing. If I am listening to something, I have to crank the volume, and there's always a concern in the back of my mind that I'm damaging my hearing. I enjoy the noise cancellation most when it's paired with music. The music masks some of the sounds that don't get canceled, and it's overall a more pleasant 
pleasant experience when you have some kind of audio coming through the AirPods, at least it is for me. When I was going on some long walks in Los Angeles, I loved the transparency setting. I felt safer knowing that I could hear my surroundings well, even though I was listening to music. I could hear cars easily, even footsteps from others around me. I felt safer with transparency enabled. It's definitely a great feature if you're doing your exercise outdoors in urban areas, or if you, like me, just enjoy exploring a city with your favorite music playing. I absolutely love being able to toggle between transparency and noise cancellation by long pressing the left AirPods stem. It took a few tries to know where the sweet spot was, but now that I do, I use it often to switch back and forth, and it just works. Holy moly, do I love watching TV using these. I can hear all the dialogue and I don't have to worry about waking up anyone who's sleeping when I'm watching TV late at night. So I'm re-watching Game of Thrones right now and the amount of detail I'm picking up in story elements just from the dialogue is incredible. Sure, watching a second time through helps, but I'm hearing things I most certainly lost when I was quietly watching it the first time in the past while everyone was asleep. After an hour or so, the AirPods can get a little uncomfortable in my ears. I take one out at a time and kind of massage my ear a bit and put them back in. After about two hours, I kind of want to break from them. I might try the small silicon tip over the medium size that came installed on the AirPods by default and see if that helps. But if you have an Apple TV and you haven't thought of connecting your AirPods to them and finally turning off those subtitles, you really should. The Apple TV paired with AirPods, especially the AirPods Pro 2, makes for a great viewing experience. Just keep in mind that nobody else can connect AirPods or some other Bluetooth headset to the Apple TV at the same time, so it has to be a solo viewing experience. With my old AirPods, I always felt there was a bit of a delay when trying to edit. What I heard was almost always out of sync with what I was watching. Now I was editing on a 2013 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, so that could have been part of the issue as well. Older Bluetooth tech paired with a newer version, but the AirPods Pro 2 paired with my 14-inch MacBook Pro seems to have zero issues staying in sync when I'm editing in Final Cut Pro. This is great for working in coffee shops or on a plane. I don't have to bust out my big corded Sony over-the-ear headphones to ensure everything's in sync. So if you're a video editor or content creator like me and you like to edit away from your home, you should definitely check out the AirPods Pro 2, they're perfect for it. I love that I don't have to worry about earwax buildup on the speaker mesh on these. Sure, some gets on the silicon tips, but they're really easy to clean. The inside lid of the case gets a little linty from my jeans, but not as much as the original AirPods case. You know how when you go to the dentist, they give you those cheap toothbrushes that you're never really going to use? Well, I always keep a couple around to clean the AirPods case because they get so linty and it's nice to use that toothbrush to get it all cleaned up. So I love that there's a built-in speaker. I've been fortunate that I haven't misplaced my AirPods yet, so I haven't had to rely on it, but I'm glad I'll be able to when that time comes because I know it's coming. I've got two little kids running around and these AirPods are definitely gonna get misplaced. It's cool that there's an option to use a lanyard with your AirPods case, but I feel zero pull in that direction. I just don't think I'd ever use it. If you use it, let me know in the comments why you use it and what you love about it. I'm happy to have my mind changed about that one. And that pretty much rounds up everything I love about the AirPods Pro 2. I know there are a few features I didn't mention. Maybe we can discuss a few of those in the comments. So what don't I love? I really wish the case was USB-C instead of Lightning. If the iPhone 15 goes to USB-C, my AirPods will be my only Apple device that requires a lightning connector. Will we see AirPods Pro 3 in spring of 2023? I have my doubts, but if we did, I bet we'd at least get the option of a USB-C case. It's not a huge deal for me because I use a Belkin 3-in-1 MagSafe charger and I have another 3-in-1 MagSafe charger at my desk, but when I'm out of the studio all day, it'd be nice to just have one USB-C to USB-C cable that works for my iPhone, iPad, and AirPods. One can dream. When I receive a phone call, and I don't receive a ton of phone calls, I will answer the phone, and often my phone is not connecting to the AirPods where I can hear through them. There is a little bit of a delay as it goes through the process of connecting, especially when I'm answering the phone from it having been sort of asleep 
to where the phone rings and I answer it. It seems like it's just taking a while for the AirPods to connect. Sometimes I have to actually tap on the audio button, select the AirPods, kind of wait a second. And you're going through this little 10 second process where you're like, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, just a second, let me try to connect manually. I don't know what it is that's causing this specifically, but it seems to happen about half the time when I answer a call. And I know that Apple doesn't intend for it to be this unreliable, and it could just be specific to my experience. So let me know in the comments if you have a similar experience. I'm hoping that subsequent firmware updates or software updates will help shore up the connectivity when you answer a phone call. And that's really all I can come up with as far as cons go. Sure, the slight inconsistency of auto switching between devices is a con, but it's not really so bad that it deserves to be its own item in the con list. I guess you could say the price is a con, $249 is not cheap, but I really think once you've experienced these, you'll look back and be happy you invested in them. I was still hesitant at first. I kept thinking, should I just get the third gen AirPods? But for $80 more, you get so many more features with the AirPods Pro 2. I'm fortunate that I run this YouTube channel and reviewing Apple tech is a part of my content. So I also knew that investing in these was good for my channel and that I'd get some ROI, not only in ad revenue, but in possible affiliate sales via Amazon as well. Just a reminder, of course, there's an affiliate link down in the description. If you decide to buy from Amazon, I get a small commission from the sale and it's a great way to support the channel with no money coming out of your pocket. So if you're on the fence about the AirPods third gen and the AirPods Pro 2, don't let $80 hold you back. The AirPods Pro 2, I think, are really worth the splurge. So that's all I've got. Let me know down in the comments how happy you are with your AirPods Pro 2 or if there are some cons that you're experiencing that I may have overlooked. That's all I've got for this one. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli. So in between writing this and sitting down and recording it, I was going through Twitter and Leela from YouTube was tweeting about how she had to return her AirPods Pro 2 because she wasn't getting good voice communication from the microphone to the caller on the other end. She was saying that the noise cancellation uh, that happens uh, through the microphone to kind of focus in on your voice when there's lots of background noise wasn't working very reliably. And she kept having issues where the other person was struggling to hear her or her voice was breaking up. I don't know that I've had that experience with mine because every phone call I've had, I haven't heard anybody on the other end say they're struggling to hear me. Most of the time I'm in my home when I receive phone calls, but on occasion, I'm at a coffee shop or I'm at the park or maybe even in an airport, even though I haven't traveled a ton since I got them. So I'll be curious to keep an eye on that as I go forward, especially knowing Leela had an issue. She was also having this issue when she was doing voice memos, especially if she was in a noisy environment, it sounds like. I haven't tested voice memos in a noisy environment, but that could be something I do just to kind of update this review and communicate with all of you if there's any issues with the microphone. So let me know in the comments if you've heard that this is an issue, the noise cancellation or sort of voice isolation that's going on with the microphone and noisy environments, making it difficult to transmit your voice. Just something to keep in mind as you decide whether or not to purchase AirPods Pro 2. All right, the video's over for real now. I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.